As I mentioned in the previous video, we're now getting into box 13.1, which is going to show how tradable permits would work. So that we assume there are two polluting firms, call them A and B, and they're going to be different. So just like in the previous chapter where we were talking about pollution taxes and showed that pollution taxes were superior to command and control when you had diverse firms, uh, firms that had different marginal abatement costs, here we're also going to have diverse firms. Firm A, um, for firm A, reducing pollution costs $20 a ton, but reducing pollution costs $30 a ton for firm B. And we're not in this chapter we're going to be concerned with whether the pollution reduction is done by reducing output or by abatement. It really doesn't matter. So firm A is the firm that finds it cheaper to reduce pollution, and firm B finds it more difficult, more expensive to reduce pollution. Let's suppose that current emissions are 10 tons for this society, with A emitting 5 tons and B emitting 5 tons. This just makes things makes things simple. Suppose that the socially optimal level of emissions is 8 tons. So currently A is emitting 5 and B is emitting 5, so the, in total they're emitting 10, but the socially optimal level is only 8. So there's too much pollution going on, something needs to be done. Question. Should society achieve the 8 ton pollution level using command and control? Or using tradable permits. So just like in the previous chapter we asked whether you should use tradable permits or pollution tax, here we're asking should you use, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> just like in the previous chapter when we asked whether society should use command and control or pollution tax, here we're asking should society use command and control or tradable permits. So that's the question. The command and control solution is pretty straightforward. Reduce each firm's pollution from 5 tons to 4 tons. So the standard is 4 tons of pollution. That means firm A can only produce 4 tons of pollution. Firm B can only produce 4 tons of pollution. The sum would be 8 tons, which is the level that society wants to hit. So as I say, this achieves 8 tons of pollution in total, which is the goal. This costs firm A $20, because you remember that the uh, cost of pollution control for firm A is $20 a ton, and firm A has to reduce pollution by one ton, because it has to go from five to four, so it costs $20. And this costs firm B $30, because again, it also has to reduce pollution from five tons to four tons, which is a one ton pollution, which is a one ton reduction, uh, pollution reduction costs $30 per ton for firm B, so B has to spend $30 in this, and therefore the total cost is $50, 20 for A and 30 for B. The tradable permit solution works as follows. Suppose, just for simplicity, each permit permits one ton of pollution. The government's initial allocation, either by auction or grandfathering, it really doesn't matter, we don't care at this right now about the initial allocation, is four permits for each firm. Uh, you can see how that would work for grandfathering because they were both producing an equal amount of pollution before. They were producing five tons each. And so if the government's using grandfathering, then since they had the, an equal number of pollution amount of pollution before, they get an equal number of permits. And since the government wants to get eight tons of pollution in total, the government would give four permits to each firm. If it was done by auction, well, you'd have to, you'd have to use other kind of assumptions to get four permits, four permits for each firm, but suppose that's what they ended up with. This would require each firm to reduce its pollution from five tons to four tons. which is the same as the command and control. But now they're able to buy and sell permits to each other if they want to. So at this point, after the initial allocation of permits, the government is out of the picture. 
I mean, the government could buy permits and retire them, as I discussed at the end of the other video, but let's forget about that. So forget about the government. Uh, firm, each, each firm has four permits. They can buy and sell among each other if they want to. Now, if they did want to, then they would bargain with each other. A and B will bargain to set a price for a traded permit. Now, I'm not saying that there is going to be a trade, but if there, uh, but if a trade did happen, and we'll calculate whether it will or won't, but if a trade did happen, then the price is set by bargaining between firms A and B. My first claim is that if the price were below 20, neither firm would wish to sell. So if the permit price were below 20, re remember that if you have a permit, you don't need to reduce pollution. So you have a trade-off between if you give up a permit, then you have to reduce pollution. Now, reducing pollution costs $20 for one of the firms and $30 for the other. If the price of permits were below 20, then permits would be great. Permits would be permits would be cheaper than polluting, and so neither firm would want to sell any of its permits. Because if a firm sold a permit, then it would have it wouldn't have four permits anymore. It would only have three, and then it'd have to reduce pollution from four down to three, and that would cost either twenty dollars or thirty dollars. But so it was, it's going to have to face a new cost of either 20 or $30, but what it gets is the permit price, which is below 20 so it comes out behind, so neither firm would want to sell. And since neither firm would want to sell, no trades would happen. So a price below 20 is not going to work. What if that price were above 30 I claim that if the permit price were above 30 neither firm would want to buy a permit. The advantage of buying a per the disadvantage of buying a permit is you got to pay the price, which which, which here is assumed to be more than thirty dollars. That's the bad part. The good part is that you don't have to abate. But abating only costs twenty or thirty dollars, so it's cheaper to abate than to buy a permit that costs more than thirty. And therefore, if the price is more than thirty, neither firm would wish to buy, so no trades would happen. Therefore, in these two cases, if the price were above twenty, uh, were below twenty or above thirty, no trades would happen. And so, if no trades happen, then this, the situation is the same as the command and control situation, because both firms need to reduce pollution from five down to four. It's in fact exactly the same as the command and control solution if grandfathering was used. If auctions were used, it's not exactly the same because command and control doesn't require any payment by the firms and the auction would require payment by the firms. But after the initial allocation of permits, it would be the same. If no trades happen, then each firm has four permits, each firm produces four tons of pollution, and that's exactly the same here as command and control. So, so this these cases are not interesting. If the price is below twenty or the price is above thirty, what if the price is between twenty and thirty? Well, this gets more interesting. Suppose the price is twenty-four. So that's between twenty and thirty. What I want to show now is that there's an incentive for the firms to trade. At a price of 24, think about firm A. Firm A, let me do some erasing. Firm A has a cost of $20 a ton to reduce pollution. So at a price of $24, firm A would not want to buy a permit because it's cheaper just to abate and, and at $20 a ton than to buy a permit at 24 but it might want to sell a permit. If it sells a permit, then it has to abate more. That only costs $20 a ton. But on the other hand, it gets the money from selling a permit, and that's 24 bucks, which is higher. So I might want to sell. At a price of $24, firm B would not want to sell a permit. So firm B 
faces uh, an abatement cost of $30 a ton. So uh, it wouldn't want to sell a permit because if it sold a permit, it'd only get 24 bucks for the permit. And then it'd have to abate more, and abating costs $30 a ton. So it would, it would uh, come out behind. But firm B might want to buy a permit because it only has to pay 24 bucks for a permit and then it doesn't have to spend the $30 uh, in abatement. So that sets up the possibility of a trade. And what we'll do in the next video is, is analyze that trade.